NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden revealed to the world that the NSA was spying on every single American, archiving trillions of phone calls and emails, all in the name of protecting us from Islamic terrorists. Snowden pilfered over 50,000 documents while working for the NSA's private spy agency, Booz Allen Hamilton, a multinational corporation that operates in the shadows. But the wizard behind the curtain that owns Booz Allen Hamilton is an equally shadowy corporation, the Carlyle Group, who purchased Booz Allen Hamilton the year Obama was first elected for a staggering $2.5 billion. The Carlyle Group has been steeped in controversy since 2001, when it was revealed that the Bin Laden family had poured millions into the Carlyle Group investments. In fact, while Osama Bin Laden's henchmen were flying airplanes into the World Trade Center towers on 9-11, George H.W. Bush was meeting with members of the Bin Laden family at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Washington to discuss investing more extensively in the shadowy multinational corporation, the Carlyle Group. Bush had just been named senior advisor and had been trying to convince the Bin Laden family owners of the multi-billion dollar Saudi company, the Bin Laden Group, to increase their investment, predicting that the defense investment company's profits would soon be booming, which they in fact did after 9-11. After the dust settled on 9-11, up to two dozen Bin Laden family members were quietly flown out of the country to Saudi Arabia, but not until they increased their stake in the Carlyle Group. Despite this controversy, and an endless amount of other controversies over the years, the Carlyle Group has remained unscathed due to having a who's who of men in high places on their payroll. This doesn't include the fact that the Carlyle Group's Booz Allen Hamilton is gorged with thousands of former NSA agents. But the Carlyle Group owns another company that has been in the news lately, or rather is behind the news. One of the oddities of the missing Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 is that of the 239 passengers aboard, a staggering 20 passengers worked for Freescale Semiconductor, which, you guessed it, is owned in large part by the Carlyle Group. It has been reported that the Freescale Semiconductor employees were on their way to a conference in China with the company portrayed as a medium-sized Austin, Texas-based company with a small footprint in the semiconductor industry. In fact, the Carlyle Group and a handful of other mega-investors purchased Freescale Semiconductor in 2006 for a staggering $17.6 billion. The media has not only portrayed Freescale Semiconductor as a non-entity, but the Freescale employees on board Flight 370 as low-level workers on their way to a routine conference in China. However, four of the employees on Flight 370, according to Austin, Texas-based IntelliHub investigative reporter Shepard Ambella, were high-level engineers that were majority owners of several semiconductor patents shared with Freescale Semiconductor, worth billions. As this patent document shows, obtained by IntelliHub, the four engineers each had a 20% ownership of the patents, a total of 80% to Freescale Semiconductor's 20%. That shockingly, the patent was filed on March 11, 2014, four days after the plane disappeared. And now that the patent owners are dead, full ownership of the patents will revert to Freescale Semiconductor into the pockets of the Carlyle Group. Edward Snowden revealed that he could wiretap anyone in the world from his Hawaiian outpost at Booz Allen Hamilton, that he and the thousands of other NSA contractors worldwide had access to the whole gamut of the NSA's surveillance apparatus, he could tap into every cell phone, every flight communication worldwide, every spy satellite. Are we to believe the NSA's private surveillance army run by the Carlyle Group has no information on Flight 370? Day by day the story changes. Flight 370 crashed in the South China Sea. Two Iranians using stolen passports hijacked the plane and flew it to Iran to use it as a weapon against Israel. It was flying extremely low to avoid radar. One week ago, the story was that the pilot, Zahari Ahmad Shah, was a political zealot flying to meet up with the Taliban in Afghanistan. 
Now the story is that the plane is at the bottom of the Indian Ocean off the coast of Australia, in which the crazed pilot was out of his mind because of a torrid love affair. That he flew the plane for seven hours in the opposite direction of the intended route, detected by no one including the nearby U.S. naval base on Diego Garcia, in order to kill himself and the 239 passengers on board. It's like Lee Harvey Oswald all over again. Instead, this time, it isn't a crazed gunman acting alone, but a crazed pilot. Is this all a conspiracy theory? That the Carlyle Group got rid of a plane in order to reap billions in profits on semiconductor patents? that their tentacles that reach into every aspect of the military-industrial complex and the media created a fantasy of a crazed pilot dumping his plane into the Indian Ocean? Perhaps. Perhaps not. But we must remember, a few years ago, conspiracy theorist extraordinaire Alex Jones made the wild claim citing an AT&T engineer and top-secret AT&T documents that the NSA was archiving every single phone call of every single American. Who's the conspiracy theorist now? Please like, subscribe and share. Also leave your comments down below. Thank you.